Vehicle Preparation Apply Parking Brake Open the hood of the vehicle. Disconnect the negative battery cable. Prepare a protective surface to place all vehicle components on. Radio Removal Remove the center console to gain access to the radio trim. Unscrew and remove the gear shift knob. Pry the center console panel and pull up in an upward motion. Using a panel tool, disengage the lower instrument panel by pulling directly away from position. Disconnecting and removing the panel is optional. Remove the climate control panel and disconnect the connector. Lay down a protective blanket over the climate controls and transmission area. Using a 10mm socket wrench, remove the four bolts holding the radio in place. Remove the radio trim panel by gripping the lower edge and carefully prying away by hand. Check for white or yellow locking clips that may not have come off with the panel. Reinsert the locking clips to the radio assembly if necessary. Disconnect connectors, antenna lead, and remove radio. Quick sync wiring harness. Remove the passenger side threshold by pulling in an upward motion. Remove the passenger side kick panel by unscrewing the black locking tab. Disengage any clips that remain and return to the removed panel. Remove the front dash bezel by prying at the edge, then pulling directly towards you. Slide the seats forward and remove the trim panels covering the seat bolts on the rear side of the seats. Using a 14mm socket, remove the two rear 14mm seat bolts. Slide seats to the rear and remove the two front 14mm seat bolts. Tilt the seat towards the rear of the vehicle. Disconnect the three connectors underneath the seat. You can work with the seat tilted back or removed from the vehicle completely. Remove the factory amplifier cover by removing the three plastic tabs on top. Unplug the three factory connectors from the amplifier and the three 10mm bolts that secure the amplifier in place. The factory amplifier is bypassed and not used. Your OEM Audio Plus amplifier assembly will utilize these three 10mm bolts. Run the passenger side of the quick sync harness and connect ground. Enter through the radio cavity and run harness through the space above the glove box in the direction of the passenger side kick panel. Run neatly and out of the way. Use cable ties as necessary. You will be left with the radio connectors of the quick sync wiring harness in the radio cavity. Run the subwoofer umbilical through the radio cavity towards the passenger side kick panel. Continue routing the quick sync wiring harness and sub umbilical towards the passenger side seat. Run neatly and out of the way, use cable ties as necessary. Unfasten white plastic clips along the threshold area. Run the cable under the carpet and exit under the seat through the center opening. Pull about 3 to 4 inches of slack for the gray and white connector. Locate the factory ground underneath the carpet and remove the 10 mm ground bolt. Install the harness ground together with the factory ground and reinstall the 10 mm bolt. Make sure that the harness ground terminal rests on top of the factory ground terminal. Reinstall front dash bezel and passenger side kick panel. Run power wire of quick sync wiring harness. Enter through the radio cavity and run the harness towards the accelerator pedal. Lay on the floor for the time being. Connect the quick sync wiring harness into the radio and factory harness using the designated connectors. Connect the quick sync wiring harness, 6 pin, and 10 pin connectors to their designated locations behind the radio. Reinstall radio, trim panel, and center console in reverse order. Factory Amp Bypass Plug in your factory amp bypass connectors, if applicable. This process is always evolving, so click this annotation for the most up-to-date instructions or select the link in the description. Terminal pin reassignment may be necessary in some instances. Amplifier Installation With your OEM Audio Plus DSP amplifier in hand, plug the white and gray 22-pin connectors from the quick sync wire and harness into their designated receptacles on the DSP amplifier. Line up each bracket arm in their corresponding mounting position. Tighten by hand initially. If binding occurs, remove the bolt and repeat the steps. Use socket wrench to tighten. 
sub-umbilical installation. Remove the passenger side lower seatbelt mounting bolt cover and bolt. Remove the passenger side rear threshold. Loosen seatbelt trim weather stripping by hand and remove carefully in an outward direction on both the front and rear passenger side thresholds. Disengage passenger side seatbelt trim panel by pulling directly towards you from the lower portion of the panel and working your way up to disengage the clips. Check for white snaps that may not have come off with the panel. Reinsert the panel if applicable. Using a 17mm socket, remove the four passenger 17mm rear seat bolts. Reposition rear passenger side seat out of the way or remove from vehicle. Take care not to scratch the interior if removing seat assembly. Remove the lower seat belt bolt cover and bolt of the passenger side rear panel. Remove the weather stripping on the rear passenger side door and remove the side rear panel. Disengage the white plastic clips in the front and rear passenger side threshold area. Run subwoofer umbilical neatly and alongside the factory wiring. Use wire ties as necessary. Continue to route the umbilical alongside the rear of the vehicle behind the rear insulation padding towards the driver's side of the vehicle where the subwoofer mounts. Reassemble rear trim panel, seat belt trim panel, front and rear threshold, and weather stripping. Power wire installation. Remove driver's side threshold. Remove driver's side kick panel by unscrewing the black locking tab. Route power wire above the accelerator pedal and steering column into the driver's side kick panel. Run neatly and out of the way, use cable ties as necessary. Under the hood, locate the grommet of the main factory wiring harness on the driver's side of the firewall. Identify the unused nipple and slice the tip to create an opening for the power wire. Lubricate power wire with silicone spray or comparable substitute. Once enough slack is visible, pull the full length of the power wire through under the hood. You want just enough length to reach the battery. Be sure to avoid interface with accelerator and brake pedals. Secure any wire slack to existing factory wiring. Use cable ties as necessary. Install supplied high temperature corrugated split loom to cover the power wires and insulate against extreme temperatures under the hood. Run power wires to the battery by following the direction of the factory wire into the EC. Connect the power wires to the fuse holder assembly by inserting the smaller 14 gauge strip power wire into the blue butt connector and crimp. Insert the larger 12 gauge strip power wire into the yellow butt connector and crimp. Apply heat to activate the solder and heat shrink insulator for the best connection possible. Remove the 10mm bolt from the battery positive terminal and install the ring terminal of the fuse holder lead. Reinstall the 10mm bolt and tighten. Do not install fuses at this time. Reassemble the driver's side kick panel and threshold. Tweeter installation. Using a pick or panel tool, carefully lift the dash speaker grill up out of position. Remove the 10 mm bolts holding the factory dash speaker in place. Disconnect the factory dash speaker and position the OEM Audio Plus 1 inch tweeter in position and reinstall dash speaker connector. Mount the OEM Audio Plus dash speaker by using the factory two 10 mm bolts. Reinstall dash speaker grill and repeat process for the other side. For steps on swapping your factory dash speaker connector with your OEM Audio Plus tweeter, if applicable, select this annotation or click the link in the video description. Subwoofer system, installation prep. Using a 17 mm socket, remove the four driver side 17 mm rear seat bolts. Reposition the rear passenger side seat out of the way or remove from the vehicle. Take care not to scratch the interior if removing the seat assembly. In the rear seat area, locate the three sub mounting locations. Lift the rear insulation padding to identify the two rear mounting spots. On the driver's side, lift the padding, identify the driver's side rear mounting location, and return the padding to its original position. Once the padding is in a rested position, use your fingers to outline the mounting location. 
With a utility knife, cut a U-shaped flap, allowing access to the hardware location. Cut any remaining material out of the way so your path is clear. Repeat these steps on the passenger side hardware location. Remove the rear driver's side threshold, seat belt bolt, weather stripping, and rear side panel. Lift the carpet by unlocking the white snaps and identify the driver's side rear floor mounting location. Use a pick tool to thread the location. Mark the carpet with a permanent marker or pencil. Cut enough of an opening to allow the 10mm hardware to thread without binding. Reinstall rear side panel, weather stripping, seat belt assembly, and threshold. Subwoofer installation. Position subwoofer into its designated location. Install the three provided 10mm bolts into the subwoofer mounting arms. Tighten by hand initially. If binding occurs, remove the bolt and repeat these steps. Use the socket wrench to tighten. Plug the black 10-pin connector from the quick sync wiring harness umbilical into its designated receptacle on the sub-amplifier. Reassemble rear seats. Tighten the seat bolts by hand at first to ensure proper alignment. If there is too much resistance, start over and double check the alignment. Tighten all four seat bolts. Fuse installation. Insert the 28 fuse for the 14 gauge power wire, the thinner wire, and the 48 fuse to the 12 gauge power wire, the thicker wire. This concludes the OEM Audio Plus System 400 Plus installation for the Toyota Tundra Crew Max. Start your engine, turn on your radio, and enjoy.